Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Lily and today I'm going to be talking about pregnancy because if you're unaware I am currently about 25 weeks pregnant now. I know it's very exciting. Halfway through, more than halfway through. But today specifically I'm going to be talking about my first and second trimester experiences because I am well into my second trimester now and just thought I'd share my experiences with whoever feels, feels like watching. Mostly it's so then in the future I can look back if I have any more children or just to look back on this time period in general. So let's get into it. Let's first get into the first trimester. First trimester, when you first find out that you're expecting and it's where a lot of people experience morning sickness or when they start getting any kind of symptoms really. I can't remember exactly when I first started experiencing symptoms but to begin with I thought I was going to be safe because both my mother and her mother, neither of them experienced morning sickness so I thought I'm safe, I got this, I'll be fine but of course not. I was not. So <laughs> the first trimester was not fun for me. So for about two months, not even exaggerating unfortunately, I suffered morning sickness and you've probably heard this from a lot of people. Don't know why it's called morning sickness because it's not just a morning thing. You experience it morning, noon, night, 2 a.m., whenever. It just fits its fancy. To begin with it was mostly just I didn't feel like eating, food Food was a bit, actually to begin with it started with me not wanting to drink coffee, which every morning when I'd get up the first thing I'd do, apart from pee, is make myself a coffee or a cappuccino or some kind of caffeinated beverage, but in the beginning it was just like, no, they don't really appeal to me. They. They even started smelling weird, so so I stopped having coffee in the morning and just had water instead, which is good because they recommend that you cut down on caffeine. I even considered just drinking decaf coffee, which I'd previously bought some to try and even that was a no-no. So I haven't actually had a cup of coffee in a very long time. So morning sickness, horrible thing. Sometimes it's just not feeling well, sometimes it's feeling nauseated, sometimes it's you're just not hungry, sometimes it's actually being sick. And to top that all off, I was also experiencing migraines, which is not fun, and being pregnant, especially that early on, there's not a lot of medication you can take, so it doesn't, that won't affect your baby. So normal painkillers don't quite... <clears throat> deal with a migraine like you'd hope unfortunately. Some days apart from the fact that I was feeling sick, sick a lot anyway and I didn't feel like doing anything because I had like no energy because I wasn't eating properly or at all some days. I didn't have any energy and then add migraines to that I would some days I would get up just to go back to bed again 10 minutes later to lay in a dark room with a wet flannel on my forehead and eyes just just to block out the world because it was, it hurt so much and unfortunately for me migraines run in my family so that's a pickle I didn't think about but yeah it's great oh I have a list by the way oh sorry Marv Marv was also sleeping on the foot of the bed because we're in my bedroom welcome um He's sleeping now and I just scared him when I put my notes down. But yeah, so added to the migraines, the lack of energy, the not eating a lot, which one plus side about not eating, although I wouldn't really call it, it's not exactly a plus side. I did lose about five kilos in two months from lack of eating, but I was keeping my fluids up, which is good. I did start to sleep more. This is all over the place, I'm all over the shop. It's like when you 
a chicken loose on a road and it's just everywhere. But I, um, my sleeping was increased a lot. I would be asleep by like nine o'clock and wake up at like nine o'clock. I would sleep for so long, it was great. As I said, drinking lots of water. I also started taking a um, pregnancy and breastfeeding vitamin thingy, which is, I can't remember the brand, but you take like a little tablet thing. The, the bottle said take two a day. I was taking one because you're supposed to eat with them, or at least, yeah, you're supposed to have food with them because they've got iron in them, and I wasn't eating, so when I did eat, which was usually a scotch finger biscuit that had chocolate on the back. Yeah, because plain biscuits are boring and I needed some flavour. Yeah, so I was taking one of them daily-ish. I was trying to take one every day. Um, I just realised I had the same thing written down twice. That's good. <laughs> Actually, no. Pregnancy brain is a thing. Because on my list, I have a few different things written down, and about three of them I have written down twice. So, doing well. Another fun fact is, you're not, in the first trimester, you're not quite developing a belly yet, but for me, anyway, any tight pants, or pants in general that I used to be able to wear, that had any elasticiness to them, were just too tight on that area of my stomach. You know, the <clears throat> it's kind of like, it's the part of your stomach that's in line with your two hip bones. That area for me is, has, has always been a bit touchy at certain times of the month, if you know what I mean. But when you know that when you're starting to grow a baby, everything gets a bit tight, everything gets a bit more interesting and any pants at all there, just it was tight and uncomfortable and unpleasant so <clears throat> it's really unfortunate that it was cold weather so I had to wear like long pants just to keep warm and track pants they got the elastic in there jeans they're tight all over leggings they're also tight all over and for some reason are even tighter around your stomach area probably to like try and keep it all in to keep you in shape so I had some interesting times trying to find pants or wear pants that weren't too tight I narrowed it down to one pair of pyjama pants that were comfortable. Good thing I was too sick to leave the house most days, so I was, it was alright to get around in pyjama pants. But then we get into the second trimester, so trimester two, the next three months that are supposed to be the time when your morning sickness cuts down and your energy picks up and yeah, which it's kind of been like that for me. I have, I don't experience morning sickness anymore which is really nice my appetite has picked up so I actually eat now I have breakfast every single day and if I don't have breakfast then I start to feel really uncomfortable because my my stomach starts to hurt if I haven't eaten and then it's like Lily you need to eat something otherwise your stomach's going to hurt and that's just not fun for anybody so I actually have breakfast every day and then lunch and then afternoon snack and then tea I don't eat big meals Generally, I eat smaller meals, like for breakfast I might have toast or crumpets or bowl of cereal. For lunch it's usually a sandwich. I used to be able to eat two sandwiches, now I can only eat like one and a half sandwiches. But yeah, I eat a lot of smaller meals rather than the big meals, which is good. I'm still not drinking any coffee except iced coffee. This was not here for demonstration, now I've just been drinking this today. Um, on cold mornings or just when I feel like a hot drink I have Milo or even when I don't want a hot drink I have Milo I've drank a lot of drunk 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 a lot of Milo lately you can get really big tins I don't I can't remember what size they are but I've gone through like two of those big tins in the last two months through two three months you, I usually drink them cold, so I have like three heaps spoons of Milo and then milk in my cup, which is good because calcium. Everybody needs calcium, especially now. I haven't actually had any food cravings. I've just gone through food phases. Like in the first trimester, I really liked chocolate yogurt. It's like chocolate yogurt, basically. I really like them. Then I got put off of them. 
Milo, that's still, it's an ongoing phase, I'm pretty sure. Although, I think I'm kind of towards the end of it because I've only had one in the last two weeks or whatever. Oh, tin spaghetti on toast. That was a, that was a big thing for a while. Like, lunchtime, tin spaghetti on toast. Afternoon stat, tin spaghetti on toast. Tea, tin spaghetti on toast. I'd heat up the tin spaghetti and then heat up the can of spaghetti and then put it on toast and then have grated cheese on it. Oh, so good. Out of that phase as well. I don't actually know what salad stuff is currently what I've been craving. Like, salad sandwiches. <sighs> Getting a bit breathy. That's another thing. Running out of breath easier. Some t like, a couple times I've been on the phone to my mother-in-law, or Michael's mom, and um, she's been like, are you panting? It's like, yes, because I've been doing this and that, and sometimes it's just walking up and down the house, or I was looking for something the other day while I was on the phone to her, that was a bit breathy, talking too fast. Um, my pregnancy vitamins, I've actually, because I'm eating now, I've actually been taking them, and I take two a day now, one with breakfast and one with tea. And at lunchtime, I have a little bit of ginger, because I've been experiencing leg cramps and they're not the kind of leg cramps that you get from walking around on your legs all day or whatever it's the kind of leg cramps that wake you up at like four o'clock in the morning because it hurts so much and you gotta like massage your leg for the pain to go away. my mum was the one that actually recommended the ginger because my grandma she used to experience um pardon me used to experience cramps and she used to have a piece of ginger every day. I don't like ginger. It tastes so weird by itself. Especially because the ginger I have is like naked ginger, which is what my grandma used to have. My grandma used to have like big chunks of it. I have like little tiny chunks the size of like your pinky finger now. But a little bit, I have a little bit of that at lunchtime and I stopped taking, I forgot to take it for a couple days and then like leg cramps came back worse. So. They are actually helping, which is good. And the midwife also said that they help with nausea. Not that I'm experiencing any nausea now, but wish I'd known about ginger when I was experiencing nausea. Oh, I did do a Google search though, as you do, because everyone these days Googles anything that's wrong with them. And I found that some leg cramps are from, say this is your foot and this is your leg. Sometimes they're, when you're laying in bed at night time, your foot's out flat like that. And they, rec they say that when your foot's flat like that, it pulls on your muscles and that's what gives you the leg cramps so I found um, now if my leg is cramping I bring my f I put my foot up like this and it kind of like levels it out and I rub it now when my leg is cramping rather than punching it three or four weeks ago I um, felt the baby kick for the first time that was really really exciting and since then I have felt it so much more. Michael's even felt the baby. And one afternoon, I was kind of laying on the bed with my sh my shirt pulled up because it's very hot and my belly gets very hot. So I like get it out whenever. I was watching my belly and I actually saw my belly move. So I called Michael in and he saw it move as well. That's really cool. But the kicking started off as like light little things that was gentle and it was at night time when I was laying down in bed. Then they escalated. Now it happens mostly in the afternoon and at night time when I'm in bed and then at night time while I'm sleeping. Sometimes they wake me up, which is not fun, especially when they're kicking in weird spots. And they've gotten harder, which is not really harder, it's just more noticeable. You can't really be like, oh, did I actually feel that? You actually felt it. So that's interesting. As I mentioned before, baby brain is a real thing. I jumble up my words a lot. I forget sentences halfway through sentences. I'll say, I'll start a sentence talking to someone and then I'll be like, nope, it's gone. That happens more often than I'd like to admit. The baby is doing well. We know the gender. We found out at um, my 20 week scan. We are not sharing the gender with anyone gonna be a surprise. I don't know if this is pregnancy related. Might be. I did a Google search and, and um, it's 
could be because I have a deficiency in one of my vitamins. Any cuts or scars, like any cuts or scratches I get, instead of them healing, normally they've been scarring, which is interesting. I don't mind, I don't have an issue with scars, but it's just interesting that I've been getting scars. Like the other week, Marvel scratched me. Um, so now, actually, there's been a few incidents where he scratched me. Like, I have a scratch on, from my Marvel that I got on my belly. I know, weird location. Don't, I'm not really sure how I managed it, but I have a scar on my stomach. I have 